Okay. Welcome, everybody. Sorry for a little bit of a glitch, but hopefully it'll go smooth from there. Um, so I'm going to talk uh, about break-even analysis, and uh, hopefully you'll find it useful in your decisions to either start a business or, or looking at expanding into new ventures. So um, you definitely want to to consider the financial viability of any of your business decisions. Um, what is the profitability of the the venture? What is the minimum number of units um, needed to sell before you break even? And uh, and a lot of decisions come in, come down to doing some sort of break even break even analysis. So three key um, items you need for break-even analysis. You need an average per unit revenue. So what what am I going to sell my my product for? So if if we use an example of an oil change business, what is the average sale price of an oil change? So um, in the examples throughout the rest of this, this uh, analysis or presentation, I'm going to use say $20 per oil change, so relatively cheap nowadays, but uh, we'll just go with that number. Um, then you need your average per unit cost, so you're looking at direct cost. So we got labor, let's say that's $7 per oil change, and the material, the oil itself, um, fluids that you need, uh, let's say those are $5 per oil change. So those are your direct costs. And then fixed costs are are expenses that you'll have even if you don't have any sales. So in a month, if we have no oil changes, what are those costs that we're going to incur whether or not we do one oil change, no oil changes, or 100 oil changes in a month? Um, so these would include such things as your rent, your insurance, uh, costs, those sort of things. So in the break-even analysis, the formula is kind of the break-even point is equal to your fixed costs, uh, which is like the rent, divided by um, APU revenue, which is average per unit revenue minus your average per unit cost. So when you take your average per unit revenue, let's say it's the 20 bucks per oil change, minus your average per unit cost, which is that $7 of wages and $5 material, $12 total, um, that difference, the 20 minus the 12, is $8 in this example. That's your contribution margin per unit, so a key, key item to consider. So if we're looking at break-even point quantity, how many units must I sell to break even? So a good, a good starting point, especially when you're starting a business, is, is uh, knowing, kind of knowing what your fixed costs are. In this example, we're going to use, say, they're $8,000 with rent insurance and all of the other fixed costs that, we have, that we're going to have. Um, then we have our direct labor of $7 per unit, our materials of $5 per unit, and our sales price of $20 per unit. So the little chart on the uh, right-hand side shows, um, we'll go in a little bit more detail in future slides, but the break-even point is kind of the intersection of these two lines here, that little dot in the middle right there. Um, so across this line is your... 8,000 in fixed costs. So that's your, your fixed costs across this horizontal line. Um, and then your contribution margin. So if you made zero units, you'd have zero money, right? So then your loss would be your fixed costs of $8,000. But as you create units, you got contribution margin. For every unit you make, you got eight. Eight dollars adding to pay help pay off your fixed costs until you hit hit this number of units where you pay off your fixed costs and then beyond that to to the right of it um, is your profit is where you create the profit. Um, obviously, when we're making a decision, we kind of want to know you know what could we lose if we don't kind of hit the number number of uh, units to sell or we know at worst case scenario we're going to sell X number of units where we'll be. And ideally, we want to be in this profit area when we're when we're deciding to start something. So 
we go to the next slide, and we'll do the calculation using those figures I used before. So we have fixed costs over our uh, contribution, average unit contribution margin. So we take the 8,000 divided by the 20 less the the fixed cost or the direct cost, the seven plus the five. So that's eight bucks. 8,000 divided by 80 dollars is a thousand units. So that's our break-even point. We need to do a thousand uh, oil changes before we break even in our scenario. So once we kind of know our break-even point, then we can do some sensitivity analysis scenarios and look at what if we change items. So in the far left column here, we've got our break-even point where we've got the $20 sales price, the 1,000 units uh, they sold. Um, oh, my mouse is kind of going all over. Um, so then if we have, let's say we increase my mouse isn't working. Sorry about the little arrow there, but it doesn't seem to be going where I want it to go. Oh, here we go. Um, if we increase the sales price 25%, uh, then then what happens? So our sale price goes from 20 to 25. Um, we're still making 1,000 units. So our total sales goes to 25,000. Our very costs stay the same because we're producing the same number of units. Our fixed costs stay the same. Um, so what changes is our contribution margin because we got higher sales. So 25,000 minus 12 is 13,000 contribution margin. Less the fixed cost gives us 5,000 of profit. So now what if instead go back to our break even and we increase the unit say, number of units we sell. In that case, um, We've got 25,000 of sales because we're selling more unit at the same $20 price. Our variable costs now go up because we're producing more units. So we have a contribution margin of 10,000 less our fixed costs equals 2,000 net profit. Um, how about if we the unit sales go 25% lower than our break-even point? So at this point, we should know that now we're going to lose money. So how much money are we going to lose if our sales are 25% lower? And once you flow it all through, you're going to lose about $2,000. So um, maybe some months you'll lose. You know, you know you're going to lose. There'll be slower months, um, but overall you'll be profitable in the end so you still go ahead with the business venture uh, the second from the end on the right our variable costs go 25 percent lower so instead of twelve thousand or twelve dollars per unit it goes to nine dollars per unit so what's the impact there then our profitability goes up by three thousand dollars and then the last example looks at fixed costs 25% lower. So instead of the 8,000 in fixed costs, we've got 6,000 of fixed costs and what ends up to our uh, profits at that time. So you can see kind of what will happen and run those scenarios depending on you know, what you think might happen in, in certain months or even going forward if you make some sort of change. Um, let's say advertising to increase the uh, number of customers coming in. Um, note that the, that increasing the price has a straight um, increase to the bottom line for the same impact. So we increase price 25%, $5 a unit, we get 5,000 per unit increased net profit. But um, standard economics theory tells us that if we do increase price, we've got to consider that usually there's a drop in the number sold. So weighing those, the, weighing those in your scenarios would probably be best. You might change a multitude of, or a couple of the different uh, components to determine what your overall profitability might be. having trouble with my mouse here. See if... oh, there we go. Uh oh. Sorry about this. I've seen to have lost my mouse here. I can't move forward. 
at all. So you can, would you be able to move me forward? The slide isn't moving. I don't know if it's me or the, my computer or what? Hmm. Now we're moved forward. Did I move forward too much? Yeah. Okay. So if I go to, uh, if I go past this slide, there's, there's, if you're you're thinking about a new as opposed to starting a starting a business, you look at maybe you're looking you're running a business right now, uh, let's say you're constructing widgets, and you buy prefabricated units as one component of these widgets, but maybe you're looking at op other options instead of buying prefabricated units or outsourcing the units to make these widgets. Um, could you make them yourself? So you're analyzing alternative options. So in this case, we can buy prefabricated units as we're already doing at $200 each, or we could make them on a lathe, which the 80, it's $80,000 for the lathe plus $75 each then to make the unit um, that we need for our widget. Or we could use a laser cutter, and now that's $200,000 to buy the laser cutting machine, plus then the cost goes down to $15 per unit manufactured. So if we only sell one widget, obviously the proof of advocated units is going to be the cheapest, but if we sell a gazillion, which is then the cheapest? So we can do some analysis using break-even analysis to consider those options. So if we, the, the cost of 1,000 units, if we run the formula through um, on outsourcing or the, well, what we're doing already, it's going to cost us 200,000 for those uh, units. If we use a lathe, it's going to cost 155,000. And if we use a laser, it would cost us 215,000. So obviously at 1,000 units, if we know we're going to cost, make 1,000 units, um, it'd be best to switch to using a lathe. Um, if the if we used three if we knew we we're going to make three thousand units and we run the calculation through, then you can see that it's the cost of the laser that works out to be the cheapest. Um, but when does the lathe become cheaper than outsourcing? So we can run basic math, um, not new math, not regular math, or regular math instead of new math. Um, and basically we're doing the calculation for the lathe. When does the lathe cost equal the outsourcing cost? And we just solve for x, basic math. So that's at about 640 units. So when does the laser become cheaper than the lathe? And again, straight math, we can figure that out. That'd be at about 2,000 units. So then we can take our uh, calculations and graph them, and and it kind of shows you. I know it's uh, kind of lots of C on this graph, lots of colors, but where this point intersects, this is the uh, per unit cost to do the outsourcing, and then we have the per unit cost to do the lathe on this blue line. Where that intersects is the break-even point. So that's where we break even. So up until the break-even point, it's best to outsource. From, if we know we're going to go produce units beyond the 640 units, but less than 2,000 units, it would be best to use the lathe, plan to use the lathe and incur that cost. Um, beyond the lathe, um, if we're beyond 2,000 units, closer to 3,000 units or more, um, it'd be best to do the laser. Again, it's the break-even cost between the lathe and the laser is this point, where 2,000, it doesn't matter which one you do, but if you know you're going to likely go higher than 2,000, you'd likely want to go with the laser. 
And if you didn't have, you just had outsourcing and laser, you didn't have the lathe option, you would actually go to this kind of, this point right here where the, those two intersect and determine, again, the quantity that uh, where it might make sense to switch from outsourcing to laser if the lathe option wasn't available. Where you knew the technology was going to be uh, outdated in a short term and and restricted in the number of units you could get out of a lathe. So it's kind of a way to look back and, and make some decisions even after you start your business and, and as you go through and making decisions on how the best way to to uh, change the production of your service, your unit, your your uh, your product um, as you continue on. So continue looking at your profits, your uh, fixed costs, and your contribution margin of your, your products or services. So in summary, the break-even uh, quantity calculations, which is the last ones we do, kind of just tells you what's cheapest for one unit, what's cheapest for a thousand units, what's cheapest for a gazillion units, and uh, weighing those factors, um, and then finding the break-even points algebraically. So it makes sense that you know as to when you should maybe look at. At, at the other options. Uh, the break-even profit quantity, so with fixed costs, how many must I sell to be profitable? And again, a lot of times we'll look at this when we're starting up a business, just to say, you know, worst case scenario, if I, you know, only could produce 50 or sell 50 oil changes, what would where, where would I be if I know in January it's slow because of the weather conditions that no one gets oil changes? Um, I'm going to lose probably about X amount of profit, but as it warms up and more people go and get oil changes, I can recover that profit in those months because I know it's going to be busier. I'll be able to sell more units and and way out um, be able to you know wait for the profitable months or offset the profitable months with the slower months and, and uh, budget accordingly. Um, and then also doing cost volume profit analysis. So um, this is good to look at as you're, as you're operating to say, okay, what if I increase you know, the sales price by 10%, what would that do to my, my net profit for the business? And uh, or if I can look at some other options to reduce my material costs, I can find a cheaper material somewhere. What would that do to my to the to my bottom line and and weighing those um, over the long term? Fixed costs can you know you know fixed costs in the near term might be variable over the long term. In that you know right now you're renting and the, it's a set fixed cost, but um, if you expand operations or your operations, the sales decline, you could always move to a smaller location or a bigger location. So you can adjust your fixed costs, but for the most part, they're in the near term, they're they're fixed costs because you can't you can't change them month to month on a on an easy basis, and that's what makes them makes them fixed in your analysis. So, any questions on break-even analysis? Just seeing if anyone's got further questions. Doesn't seem to be. So I guess I can, that would be it. I guess if you do have questions, um, I am available for uh, further follow up or questions or um, on anything I presented. Uh, be more than willing to give you a hand. You can email me or give me a shout to my direct line that's listed on this page. Thanks.
All right. Well, thanks, uh, Lori, so much for taking the time out of your day um, to teach us a little bit more about the break-even analysis. I also want to say thank you to everyone else who is able to join us today. Uh, you'll be able to view this webinar on demand on our website within a few days. And our next upcoming webinar um, will be happening actually on November 1st, and it is about crisis management for your website. So you can find that at wesk.ca slash events, and there is webinars listed on that page there. So thank you everyone for tuning in today, and have a great afternoon. Thank you.